Good afternoon, software engineers. Sorry about the kind of like lower end video yesterday. I was kind of tired, but I wanted to get something out for you. So I went ahead and recorded, even though it was later at night and I, you know, it was a little down. So I got my first thumbs down on a video. So, mm, but you know, I, <laughs> I posted these on YouTube. Who knows? It could be a bot coming by. It could be the fact that I said a quiz was coming out Monday. It could have been anything, you know? I'm learning about all this the same way y'all are doing the best we can, but you know what? I promise you we're going to be fine. We're going to get through it as far as 3240 goes. So thumbs up. Just got back from raiding my office at UVA. Um, you know, left some stuff there, wanted to go get it. You know, something important like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> um, a replica of the Master Sword created by my brother. It's very nice. Um, he gave it to me for Christmas, and I wanted to have it in my office here so I could enjoy it here as opposed to just sitting by itself in my office. But regardless, I have some stuff for you today, and I'm learning more and more about the best way to do this. So, hey, look, I'm going to put up some notes as I'm telling you what's going on in this video. First off, I'm going to show you a little bit more about how to do Guided Practice F, tell you when it's due and where you should submit it to. Uh, quiz number three on verification and validation will come out tomorrow. It will be open note. There'll be more instructions with it. Um, as far as, you know, what to study, I'm not going to necessarily put together a study guide right now. I'll just kind of talk to you about it when I release it with the video tomorrow. That just seemed easier. Um, team check-ins will begin tomorrow. So the TAs are going to start contacting the scrum master. So be looking out for that. I send information about how office hours are going to work with the TAs. We'll see how that works out. Um, please let me know how it's working or not working. Fair warning, today and tomorrow, probably they're still trying to make sure they get their calendars together. So if you go in and there's no one there, I apologize. Um, but, you know, we're trying to make sure we're on top of things. I'm going to do a live Q&A stream on Tuesday, March 24th at 11 a.m. Eastern time. And I'm going to send out a Zoom link for that. And the way we're going to do that is... Um, when you come on, you'll come on, uh, muted and you're with your camera off and I'll have my camera on and I'll watch the chat window for questions. And we'll go for about an hour. We can talk about anything that you want. Um, but presumably we'll be talking about stuff related to, um, uh, the material in the design decomposition stuff as far as, uh, GPF and people have asked to see some gaming. So there's my Twitch link, uh, twitch.tv slash, uh, Kylum CV, um, Kylum is my gamer tag, CV, uh, short for Charlottesville, so short for curriculum vitae, like body of work. That's where that CV came from, that because Kylum was taken many different places. Um, if you are a Hearthstone player and you want to, you got the 80 gold quest, you want to challenge me, um, it's Kylum uh, 1224. If 1224, uh, spelled like you see it there, just without the CV. So um, if you're interested, send me a friend invite. I don't know, maybe we'll start a World of Warcraft game, <laughs> something like that. But anyway, let me talk to you now about Guided Practice F. So switching over to my browser view, getting out of that. Uh, doop -a -doop -a -doo, there we go. So um, let's look at what we did last semester for... Okay. This was the this was the prompt that we gave for the quiz last semester. Obviously, I'm not going to use this again, but here's the idea. So this is a um, it's an app where um, campers would come in and want to send virtual postcards back to their families. So you can see that the camp counselor could take pictures. They'd load the pictures. They generate the postcards and send it back. So the idea with this short prompt here is how would you do this object oriented and how would you do this functionally? Okay. So I'm going to wait just a moment, pause the video and you can read this. Maybe I need to make it even bigger. I don't know. I don't know what you're looking at this on. If you're looking at this on your iPhone, this is probably really tough, but I'll just take a long sip of Pepsi while you drink, while you read. My Pepsi's empty. That did not work very well, but you know, uh, that's fine. Okay. Uh, presumably you paused and now you're back into it. Let's see how we might do this. From an object-oriented perspective, let's do that one first. That's the easiest one to do. So you'll look at this and say, okay, nouns. Need them nouns. So what do we have here? Web app. Stop right there. Someone is going to do this and it's wrong. 
<laughs> the system itself is never a class, okay? Um, always I'll have people who do the system as a class. Don't do that. Uh, and the reason many people want to do that is they want to have somewhere where it's going to, this is where the main is. You don't need to have that. Um, this is more about modeling the requirements. If you start adding in a bunch of classes or, or, or feature or aspects in this diagram that aren't part of the actual solution, you're adding in d implementation bias. You're putting stuff that doesn't need to be there. Okay. So find the nouns that have to do with the actual app. So we look through here. Postcard looks good. Counselor looks good. iPad. No, iPad's not. iPad is going to be something that's going to be generating the pictures. Picture is good. Picture is something that would be in the system. Camper is good. Um, friends and family or a relative, something like that. That's good. You start with that. Once you figure those out, then you can go in and say, how are they related? H how do I pass data from one to the next? So I have some of this, a solution from last semester I want us to look at here. This person got full credit. Their name is not on here. Thank goodness. Okay. So right here, notice that they have counselor, photo library, friend, postcard and camper. They have some really good things in here, such as the cardinalities. One to many counselors can post into one main photo library. That one photo library um, can be read by one to many campers. A friend can have one to many uh, campers and a camper has one to many friend. Notice here, this is actually saying that a camper must have at least one friend. Good. Um, you know, you, you could say whether that's good or bad. I'm going to zoom in on this. So notice like here for the friend class, we have name, ID, and friend list, and add camper and add counselor. None of this is language specific, and that's totally fine. Look up here at the counselor. Name, ID, friend list, uh, postcard list, um, tagging a camper, uploading photo. They're coming up with all of the different features, all the different behaviors that these class should do, and it's, it's great. So this is what I would be looking for, for an object oriented decomposition for a class diagram, find those nouns, find the aspects of those nouns, of those objects that make it unique. And then how do they interact? And the cardinalities are great. Notice that there's, I, they didn't need to do any extra diamonds or, or, or rectangles or, or anything else on the lines. If you do that, that's great. Um, I'm not worried about that right now. I'm much more worried about, can you figure out the objects? Let's jump back here to the scenario. Now let's talk about the activities, the actions, the verbs. What are the things that can, that we actually are doing in this system? If you're going to do a functional decomposition of a system like this, there's not one functionality that explains the entire thing. So before we had that generate payroll thing, uh, that was the example in the slides. And that's great. And that works if that's the only thing you're dealing with. There's a lot of things going on here. Let's pick one function. How about just generating a postcard? What are the steps that have to happen? Well, a picture has to be generated. The student, the camper has to choose the picture. The camper then adds the picture to their postcard and then sends it to the friends and family. Let's look at some examples. Here's one right here. So for building a postcard, um, we have the, um, you build a postcard, the camper logs in, goes through a login uh, uh, situation where they're verified, the key comes back, the, uh, the credentials are sent, uh, the camper uh, it, it uploads the photo library, select the, the photos, you know, they've got the arrow showing the flow of data, selecting the photo, uh, photos archived. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. Uh, back to the building the postcard and add the text and send the postcard. Perfect. Um, over here, looking at the next one, create postcard, logging in, uh, enter ID, password, validate, come back down, choosing the photos, view them, select, confirm, adding the text and sending the postcard. This is great. This is a great way of showing this is how the action is going to take place. This is how it would work. This is how um, we would we would want to sh explain this activity, this feature to someone else. Okay. So what I want you to do is I want you to do this for the, the uh, example that is in the guided practice. So remember the way you get to the guided practice, we go to CS 3240 and we click on student resources here on the side and we go into the guided practice folder and we go to design decomposition. We get it right here and you are building it for an assignment submission system. I want an object oriented decomposition, that class diagram for the whole thing, model the, model the features, 
model the objects, and then for functional, pick one feature, please, just one. So maybe just submit, just grade, something like that. Okay, on the first page, you can put your name. If you work with other people, great. You can do a team submission here. That's totally fine. Um, and then page two, the object oriented, page three, the functional decomposition. You can do it on this piece of paper. You can do it by hand and scan it and turn it as a PDF. You can uh, get a program like Lucidchart or OmniGraffle and do them and paste them on here. You, we're flexible. What, what, what your tool chain looks like, we, we will work with it as best we can. Um, just make sure that when you submit it to Gradescope, you can come over here to, that's the other. Let me go to let me go to Gradescope for this semester. If I go into Gradescope for this semester and I go to assignments and I go to design decomposition F. Uh, if I say edit outline, so when you submit, you need to make sure you say uh, the O decomposition is on page two or wherever it happens to be for you. And same thing for functional decomposition. That way that we can grade them easier and we can get better feedback to you. So um, I think that's there you go. So uh, I hope this explains how to do GPF. It's due by Wednesday at midnight. Okay, Wednesday, midnight, Eastern. Okay, Wednesday, 11.59 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Okay, Wednesday, the 26th, 5th, 7th, 5th. Wait a Okay, math. It's tough. So if you have any questions, I'm going to post this on Piazza. Please make sure you post your questions there. I'll do that live Q&A on Tuesday. If you're watching this on Sunday, maybe you'll catch my Twitch stream. Maybe I'll, if I'm not too tired, I'll log in. If you want to send me that, that battle, uh, battle tag invite and play some Hearthstone, let's do it. Um, I miss seeing you guys and gals. Um, yeah. So stay safe, stay healthy, and I will talk to you next time.